Hi, this is Jeff Mesnick. I'm here with the Channel Marketing Journal, and I'm excited to be here today with Geneva Lake from MAPR. She is the Vice President of Alliances and Business Development. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you, Jeff. So I would love for you to share with our audience kind of an elevator pitch about who MAPR is, and also to tell everybody a little bit about your role. I mean, Everybody has titles, and titles sometimes mean yeah. many things. So maybe you could yeah. share, what is it that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Absolutely. So in terms of MAPR, um, really, MAPR is the industry's next generation platform for AI, ML, machine learning, and analytics. Uh, what we provide to the enterprise is they can take any data set, uh, any data type of any size, and store it analyze it and be able to make business decisions based on data. Mm -hmm. um, our new branding is dataware, uh, that we really uh, provide dataware. And you know, this space can be somewhat obtuse, uh, especially to folks outside the industry. And so I think the best way to describe what we do is a couple anecdotal examples. One being is that we're finding that we are the de facto standard for autonomous driving projects. Uh, so we have multiple car manufacturers, mostly driven out of Europe, and that platform, they have found that MAPR is really the only technology that can handle uh, that type of data in terms of both size. Um, you can only imagine the multiple data points and oh, yeah. the liability and everything associated with that business. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, it is, it's exciting to be part of it. Um, and sort of the new path that we're, we're forming here. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, another example is uh, we have the largest biometric database in the world. Uh, ADHAR, which is an Indian governmental agency, uh, uses MAPR and has been for years. And it has never been down, actually, which uh, is phenomenal. And they have a billion people that are in this database. And essentially what it is, if you're an Indian citizen, you don't have uh, any type of ID. It's, a, again, a biometric database, 13 points of reference. So 10 fingers, palms of the hands, and retinal scan. You need it from anything from social services, you know, welfare type services, uh, even giving, giving a cell phone. So that just gives an example of the type of scale that we deal with. So that's essentially what we do. That's very cool. And so what is your role within that organization? Yeah, so, uh, you know, as the Vice President of Alliances and, and Business Development, uh, my job when I first came in three years ago was to take the company to another level when it came to leveraging partners and really make it a world-class partner program. So we had no program in place. So, you know, built all that uh, around having a you know solution guide, the different levels of partnerships, all of that, built a team, uh, put together the different pillars, uh, that would be everything from our SI relationships, the global SIs, regional, mm -hmm. uh, our resellers, VARs and VADs. We have a, a distribution agreements depending on the theater. Uh, our technology partners, uh, management there, um, also our OEM business. And I'm also responsible for the ISVs. So the whole certification process associated uh, with doing what we do in our business. Uh, I have a team of engineers that works with our customers on uh, certifications. So essentially that's what I do at MAPR. So not that much. <laughs> not that much. Piece of cake. <laughs> that's a lot. I'm, I, I actually, um, I really love the ISV angle that vendors are taking, to be honest with you. It's, mm. the reason I like that is because it helps create new marketplaces. You know, it, it really provides entrepreneurs this new kind of exciting way to leverage great technology and improve upon it and focus it. Yeah. And ISVs are important to us. I yeah. mean, we want companies out there building on MapR, leveraging MapR, and our ISV relationships are so important. I mean, Amex is uh, our largest customer. And they have 130 use cases on MAPR with multiple integration points. I believe there's over 40 ISVs that are integrated with MAPR. So wow. having all of that, you know, on the light, on the latest release, you know, it's customer driven. So if they tell the customer, we, you know, need you on 6.0 for MAPR, you know, we are responsible for, for, for doing that and doing that work. So the ISV relationships are really important to us for a lot of reasons. 
Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about the relationships and the programs that you've launched. And is there anything, you know, that you can share with our audience that's something that you're most proud of and had a few hurdles that you had to overcome in order to kind of get it really going? Yeah, you know, interestingly that you uh, spoke about ISVs because that um, is a program that I'm very proud of. Uh, if you look back at our last fiscal year, a lot of work went into building a PRM, so mm -hmm. pr uh, Partner Relationship Management System, right? I mean, it's not the sexiest part of the business, but yeah. the reason why I, I speak to this is because this system has really allowed us to take our limited resources, which every company struggles with resources, yeah. right? I'm never going to have the size of team I want to have. <laughs> <laughs> How do I take those resources and deploy them in the best way that makes sense for driving revenue, which is why we're here. I mean, you know, right. enterprise for-profit software company, you know, and we're, we're proud of that. <laughs> and so this system has really helped us automate a lot of the partner relationships, uh, really make it as self-service as possible. Like I said previously, with the certification process, be able to um, manage all of that, track it, allow the partners to uh, enter their information to manage that process uh, for themselves is really freed up our really expensive, actually, resources uh, to do other things that, that drive revenue, you know, build joint demand with our partners, um, develop new relationships, strategic alliances and such. So that's really helped us, uh, you know, up our game, become more efficient. As Excellent. An so with that, uh, with those, you know, the PRM system or maybe it's not the PRM system, but the idea of scale. Yes. How, you know, there must be some kind of focus on partner to partner engagement. Is there where the ISVs and partnering, having the ISVs partner up with some of the channel partners who deploy these programs? Yes. You know, and, uh, you know, you mentioned scale. Scale is so important. That's something I'm always thinking about because mm -hmm. we're a growing business. Uh, and of course, we hope to continue to be a growing business. And with that, that's always top of mind. Yeah. You know, how do we scale and, and leverage these relationships? And what I'm really finding is that several of the ISVs, uh, our top ISVs, are really helping to extend our platform and expand our platform to make it that much more interesting for our customers. You know, mm -hmm. n although we say we're a completely comprehensive end-to-end -end platform, nobody really is. Yeah. I mean, that bit of marketing branding there, but um, you know, essentially you need uh, ISVs to really help complete that solution. And then we can go into these accounts shoulder to shoulder, you know, depending on the industry and what's important to them and maybe where there's a gap that uh, our ISV relationships can can really fulfill. Right, uh, right. You know, and then there's also the, the three-way relationships that have really uh, helped, you know, non-competing ISVs that we can work with uh, together. And, you know, that's, that's more feet on the street. That's more um, that we can help uh, apply to our customer situations, solve business problems and everything um, through three-way, even four-way relationships. I got to imagine sometimes that can be a challenge because everybody wants to do everything. But sometimes yes. you get these ISVs who are really good and the ones who are smart know how to connect. They do. They do. And I think the important thing to remember, and this has been something that I try and tell my team as much as possible, is, hey, if we're going to enter into this relationship, what are they getting out of it? I mean, right. yes, this is beautiful for us. You know, this completes our our solution. We really need them, but do they need us? And do they see that we in that relationship with us can help further their business, can help uh, get them new customers? If they don't see the value and they don't get it and they don't see how it's going to apply to their salespeople, then it's, you're wasting your time. It's not, the relationship's not going to be advantageous to anybody. Right. Excellent. Well, this has been great. I love it. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of good information here. I'd love to eventually come back to you and kind of see how, you know, really focus in maybe our next conversation on how the ISV program has continued to grow. Very good. I'd be happy um, to share. But before we go, there's one yes. more question I have to ask. So Please do. <laughs> <laughs> one of you know, every year or every few months, I like to come up with a, a fun question to say, tell us a little bit about what your favorite piece of something might be or for this for this issue or for this uh, quarter, so to speak, our question is mm -hmm. going to be, what was your 
strangest or craziest travel experience for business? Well, Jeff, I'm never on the road, so I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What's the percentage? Oh, Is that like, you know, 10% uh, at home and 90% on the road? Or? <laughs> yeah, you know, I try not uh, for that uh, not to be the case. I guess that's why I have avoided consulting my entire career. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have many. I have many, many. Um, but I think the one that comes to mind in terms of crazy travel experiences a few years back, I had to travel to Tokyo, and uh, this was before I was able to negotiate business class. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm in coach, and I'm in the middle seat, and oh. I'm in the back. Aye. And I, uh, I had a root canal about a month before, and it was just pounding on my, just pounding on my face. And it actually, and this is really gross, but you know, <laughs> it, it's it's okay. Um, it, it actually abscessed through Aye. the tube. So it was actually coming out. Yes, that that was coming out through the gum. Right. It had gone through the gum. My face was pounding. Uh, I was on all these drugs. I could not sleep. So I took an Ambien. That didn't work. So I took an Ambien. Another and that didn't work. And so for about twelve hours, I was this stumbling zombie on this flight. It oh, was the no. worst experience of my life, and I had to go there, uh, travel wise. Yeah. Anyway. I had to go there and conduct meetings and then take that flight back before I was able to get back to the uh, oral surgeon to fix the problem. Oh, so that's my. just many delightful stories. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's that's a true road warrior story, right? It is. I actually have a tattoo even from when that all, uh, a little tattoo. Or, that's from, awesome. <laughs> from my abscess. <laughs> I don't know many people that have had an abscess. Oh, no, no. That's, oh, God. <laughs> I'm sure the person sitting next to you is loving it, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Seat me. <laughs> but I wasn't drooling on them. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad that you survived and that <laughs> everything worked out. Well, thank you very much, Geneva. This has been fabulous. Um, and I look forward to continuing our dialogue. Very good. My pleasure, Jeff. Thank you. So this has been Jeff Mesnick with the Channel Marketing Journal, and I was here with Geneva Lake from MapR. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.